Today, we are talking about surprise. Now, before we start the intro, I just want to say that surprise is what I call a leading emotion or a leading expression. It's generally something that happens and then leads to this, 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 or even this. So if you guys during the course of this video notice some similarities between the last couple videos, guess what I know too. All right, now let's start the intro. So today we're talking about surprise. Now I think everyone's experienced surprise and you might've experienced it in a variety of different ways. And again, to visually understand how to portray something, we should then understand what it means. So this definition tells us, surprise is a brief mental and psychological state, a startle response experienced by animals and humans as a result of an unexpected event. Surprise can have any valence, that is, it can be neutral, moderate, pleasant, unpleasant, positive, or negative. Now again, what do I always talk about in these videos? Range, right? Emotions, expressions, they all exist in a range, and surprise is no exception. So just like the description said, we have from moderate to intense, and of course it can get more intense or even less severe. But another thing we wanna mention when it comes to surprise is that surprise leads in to other emotions, right? So there's a happy surprise, there's a scared surprise, there's a sad surprise, angry, you know, I could keep going. So these are little key details that when we're thinking about drawing someone's surprise, we can add those details as well to even enhance that expression just a little bit further. Now, I've already said it several times before, but I think taking a look at the most basic form of expressions, which is emojis, and then learning and applying that to something that you already know how to draw is gonna be one of the best things you could do. So let's refer to Flower to help us out. All right, so hopefully you're either drawing Flower or you got your own character out, and you're gonna have some fun applying these emojis to your character or whoever you're drawing. Um, Really, I, I mean, you can see with this second face here, I just kind of went crazy with it and had fun. Again, this is a really good way of just understanding like emojis are just a simple, super readable, right in, in front of your face kind of way to express emotions. And if you can take that and make it your own and add it to something that is your own, you're already there, you know, like you only have a few steps to take before you can apply this to other things. So, this might seem like a silly exercise to you guys. I know I've been doing this in a few of the videos. Just give it a try. I promise you'll like it. Now, again, when it comes to drawing something exaggerated as such as an expression, it's always going to be more beneficial to you to go back to your childhood. Remembering some of these pictures and understanding why these expressions are saying what they're saying is something that you can definitely add to your realistic portrait or your more, car more cartoony one as well. Before we get to our drawing, let's go ahead and break down someone's face. So again, remember ex this expression of shock exists on many different planes. With surprise, remember it's a quick kind of unconscious movement. So you're gonna be drawn back and you're gonna be opening up. So again, kind of like with fear, you got the face really opening up wide. And that's gonna be happening on both sides, obviously, as everything moves together. Now, I'm not going to get too laborsome into detail with this because I've already talked about this so much, but just remember that the jaw is dropping down, which means that your proportions will be getting longer as well. Okay, so we're not thinking about that eye in the center anymore. We're thinking about longer in the chin. Other things we can notice here. Now, when someone is surprised, the difference that's going on in their facial expression is, you know, we have that open mouth, but so did we have that with fear and a couple other expressions too, right? But what you have here is a little bit more of a retracted kind of teeth. That sounds weird, I know, but all I'm saying is that you're gonna see less teeth happening in the mouth. It's gonna be just more of like an open black hole kind of a look um, versus where someone who is fearful kind of has a little more of a tension feeling and shows a little more teeth, if that makes sense. So a little more clenched on the jaw. Here, looser, surprised. Jumping to the eyes, the thing we have here is nice raised eyebrows. You don't have them going in the angry direction or the sad direction. They're just kind of up because the face is again being drawn up. Last detail with the eyes here is generally speaking, the more of the white of the eyes you can see. So all this area without making her look like a demon there, 
the more surprised someone is going to look. Now, you're generally gonna see it in drawings, um, especially, you know, like exaggerated or cartoony where they really go small with that pupil. Shrinking the pupil can really make someone look more surprised. This is gonna be completely up to you on how much you want to exaggerate generally. Some people can't even open their eyes wide enough so you can see the white all around. But again, if you can create the white of the eyes all around and have that pupil somewhere in the center, it's going to make that person look even more surprised. For those of you guys who tuned in last week, this week I am having a good art confident week. Um, if you guys have ever struggled with art confidence, art block or whatever it is, I would recommend you check out my last video because I do kind of talk about it because I was having an off week. I think it's an understandable thing. I think we all have off weeks, right? So again, if you have that problem, you're interested, go check that out. Now, here again, you know, this isn't, I say it all the time, a proportion video, but I do lay out my proportions all the time. So if you guys can see, um, <clears throat> a couple things we're thinking about here in terms of just head structure. We are seeing a little bit more of the left side of his face, our right. So we do kind of want to add that in. A little bit of a tilt going on, if you guys can recognize that. I know this doesn't seem like a big thing, but trust me, like when you're trying to give character, when you're trying to give expression, little things like even a head tilt can enhance that expression, even if it's subtle. We have a pretty subtle expression here. I wanted to start with something a little more simple. Um, so this is kind of like maybe like that moderate you know, we're on, the, we're on the low end of the intensity scale of surprise, right? Like this guy just saw something, maybe like, I don't know, like something he didn't expect to see in his apartment and he's like, ooh, right? Um, but we're not at like full on shock surprise. So what are some of the characteristics you're noticing that make up this surprised moment? Well, a couple things, right? We don't have a full open gaping mouth, right? But we do have a little bit of an opening between the lips. Again, surprise is kind of like this natural reaction that you kind of get, where the face kind of opens up and loosens at the same time. So the jaw dropping a little bit, pretty natural when you loosen up, right? So again, you know, keeping that mouth open a little bit. So what I was doing here was I, I went in and drew the pupil first, not something that I generally do often, but when we're thinking about surprise, and I was talking about like, you know, you wanna have more of the whites of the eye to express surprise. Well, to me, it was important to place the pupils kind of prime and center. Now this guy's looking a little bit over to the side, so I kind of like moved those eyes over to the side and played with it a little bit. Of course, I, I always exaggerate my eyes a little bit, even when I'm drawing realistic. It's just kind of a cue that I do. Um, if we are talking proportions and stuff, I did notice kind of after I finished this drawing that I could have gone a little longer. There's a little more space between the nose to the lip, blah, blah, blah. Again, we're not here to draw a fully accurate picture of our reference. We're here to capture the expression and the emotion. So for the most part, we have a finished expression here. Again, this is more of a subtle, maybe just notice something surprise, right? So. A lot of this storytelling that's happening in this picture, in my opinion, is in the eyes. Um, you know, generally, like if I just kind of drew those eyes half down or we only saw half the pupil or something like that, the idea of shock would be really, really, really not there. Just, you know, no better way to say it. Um, but since I have gone and expressed so much white of the eye, it gives us that moment. All right, so I'm just gonna add in a few bit of details here, and then we're gonna move this guy over to the top left corner, and we're gonna draw our exaggerated version. I hope these videos aren't going too slow for you, by the way. I try to keep them slow so you guys can follow along with me, but let me know in the comments if it's too slow, too fast. What do you guys think? What do you need here? Now, when I draw more exaggerated faces, I always take a page from the caricature handbook, which is kind of to just start with a shape and build off that shape. Now this guy kind of has square features, right? A very 
not so around the chin. Um, I really like that section where you can kind of see like, you know, his face is kind of swishing together. So it caused a shadow where his cheekbone connects to his jaw there. And I really like that section. So I kind of wanted to emphasize that a little more and see how I could play it up a little bit. Other than that, all I'm really going to push with this exaggerated pose is essentially what we talked about in the beginning where um, I'm going to want to have a longer face because again, surprise, you know, it kind of brings longness to the face. It opens up on the top and it opens up on the bottom. So length really helps portray that story. Um, other things, you can kind of exaggerate the mouth a little bit, but I do kind of like to keep that subtlety in the mouth for this one because we're gonna have, don't worry, there's a, there's some pictures coming up with some, some open mouth um, drawing that we get to do. So you're gonna have some fun there, but Otherwise, again, we're just going to go back to the eyes and I didn't do these in my last couple videos, but here I'm just going to start with a circle base and I'm going to build some eye structure on top of that But because I really want to play up and emphasize what's going on with those eyes. And again, if you guys remember when I was talking about like you choose your exaggeration path here when we were looking at that girl and kind of breaking down expression of surprise, I'm going to shrink his pupil a little bit. Um, I want to see the white of the eyes all around. It's really going to just kind of over exaggerate, but completely tell the story in a snap, right? And that's, that's kind of what you want when you're going for exaggeration, when you're going for cartoony or whatever it is, is you want it to be instantly readable like an emoji. Oh, is that where that exercise comes from? Hmm. Hmm. Might be on to something here, <laughs> but anyways, so again you guys can really see the big difference here is just length i even kind of want a little bit longer and a little crazier with the hair right i mean you guys have seen the cartoons where someone gets like shocked or surprised or whatever and even their hair reacts right like their their fur or whatever they are if they're an animal it just it jumps all over their body hey you know if it works it works so it worked as far as i'm aware in cartoons so i'm gonna throw it in here a little bit it doesn't take away from the human aspect of him to give him a little bit more of a ruffled hair look. Overall, it just kind of adds to the story. And again, when it comes to expression, it's all about what's the story you're telling and how are you portraying that? So I think we're finished with this guy. Let's move on to another surprised fellow. Okay, so a couple things here, but one that I want to mention right off the bat is remember when we talked about there are different types of surprise. So what kind of surprise are you seeing here when you your first like gut reaction when you saw this guy? To me, it's like a happy surprise. It could be turning, it could be, but to me, I'm kind of seeing more of like, it, it looks like that surprise face is about to turn into a smile in my opinion. You guys could see something totally different, that's fine. But again, this is a little bit of a story element that you can add. So what I'm gonna be doing in this picture while I'm kind of like copying my reference here and like adding some of my own style and detail, I'm gonna be thinking happiness, happiness, happiness. So it kind of comes out of like a natural reaction of what I'm drawing um, where I'm gonna end up trying to apply some happiness to it kind of accidentally if that makes sense, but on purpose, which that's very contradictory, I understand. But anyways, we move on. So remember, open mouth means what? It means longer proportions. So again, we don't have the eyes and the eyebrows in the same spot. Um, so we're, we really lengthened that jawline down. I put the chin lower. You can see that line that's in the middle of the mouth there. That's where the lips were supposed to be proportionally. So you guys can see I'm really kind of playing around with the idea. I'm pushing the proportions because that's what's happening to the person's face. Now, everything you guys can see here, because remember it's lengthening. So I'm drawing the eyebrows above the eyebrow line. The eyes, they're going to hover right on top of the eye line. Usually it would go through about the halfway point of the eyes or sometimes even the top lid, depending on who you're looking at. Here, I'm making sure that those eyes hover right above it because again, lengthen it up, pull it apart, right? Um, 
I know I'm kind of on repeat with saying that, but it's a really important aspect of making this look like what you wanted to make it look like. All right, so once you capture things like the mouth and you know the eyes in there, for the most part, everything is just kind of detailed. So here we're going in adding a little bit of detail. I want it to look like my reference. So I'm going to add some of his character. He has um, you know, like the mustache goatee kind of thing going on. We'll get in his ears, his cool haircut. And then from there, I think we could have some fun exaggerating this guy. Onto the exaggeration. So again, just like the one before this, I'm gonna start with a shape. I don't really know how to describe the shape that I'm drawing other than like, kind of like a strawberry. I don't know if that makes any sense. But anyways, you wanna start with a shape. So that's what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna also do here is, you guys can kind of see, I'm just making sure that I have it semi-symmetrical on both sides. We have a front facing view, so it wouldn't make more sense if I have more if, after I put down that center line, which is what's helping me kind of figure out my shape here, um, it wouldn't make sense if I had more on one side versus the other side. So that's what I was doing. I was correcting it. Now, one thing I like to do when it comes to exaggeration is making asymmetrical features. What, is, what do I mean by asymmetrical? Well, what I want is a crooked smile or a crooked open mouth surprise, right? So where his bottom lip, it's kind of going off on one side. It's it's up higher on one side, lower on the other side. This is something that's not gonna make, not only gonna make it look more exaggerated, but it's also somehow gonna make it look more human. Because again, we don't all have perfectly symmetrical features. There are people out there that like one end of their mouth opens a little wider than the other and it doesn't open perfectly symmetrically. And you wanna think too, when something, someone's having like a surprise reaction. They're not thinking about, ooh, are my are my lips opening symmetrically, right? So again, these are all characteristics that I'm trying to play up here, like just his mouth being off center. Um, maybe a little bit of difference in the eyes, like one eyebrow could be higher than the other. One is more raised than the other. You know, um, different aspects like that. Kind of, it, it adds more interest to your picture, not only, but it just, it'll give it more of that character you're really looking for. Now, I, this guy's surprised. So I really wanted to build him on a big eye basis, right? And if you guys haven't tried this, I, I didn't before this, but you got to where you, you start with like an oval and then you build some eye structure on top of there. I felt like I was drawing like a Pixar character in a really fun way. So, um, I would definitely say give that a try if you guys haven't tried that yet. I actually really like that. It might be something that I carry over to um, some of my my like personal work too. I don't know, it was just kind of fun. I really like the way the eyes are looking here. So now I'm just going in and adding a little bit of that character. You know, we got some exaggerated features. So I'm just gonna do some things like um, have his, his hair be a little bit closer to his brow just so I can lengthen his face a little more with some crazy hair on top. Um, that's about it. We have one more to go. For anyone that's watched this video all the way through, this should look familiar. We broke this one down earlier, so I'm not gonna go for the realistic and then um, caricature one on this one. I'm just gonna go full caricature. We already kind of looked at this por uh, picture, broke it down, so for her, we're just gonna jump straight to a caricature or just exaggerated kind of pose. I don't know if I would call what I did caricature-esque. Um, you guys see I'm not starting with a shape here. I did kind of want to start with some structure. Um, sometimes it's fun to start with a structure and then really break it and find ways that you can break it in realistic ways. Um, so that was kind of my goal here. Uh, just kind of went in to see if I could figure it out. Now, just like I was doing with the eyes, I thought maybe I could start with an oval shape for the mouth and kind of figure it from there. 
and see what happens. So just playing up different features here. Again, what I'm trying to think is a little bit more of that asymmetricalness and just kind of breaking the pose a little bit too. If you guys look at that picture, you see how close her bottom lip is from touching that line of her like chin turning into her cheek, like right along the side of her jaw there. Push it. I want to push it. I don't want to be timid. I don't want it to have a lip almost touching that line and creating a tangent. I'm going to push it over the edge. So I'm actually going to have her lip break that line and stick out further than that line. She's, she's surprised. She, uh, this looks like she's really almost shocked. So again, she's not thinking about what are her features doing. So we're going to put those in and really exaggerate them and push it out of its boundaries. All right. So otherwise, um, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but we're talking about the same thing here, right? I really lengthened the face. A um, couple details here. When you're drawing females, less of a nose is always more feminine than drawing a full on bridge of the nose. So I just drew kind of like the bottom portion of the nose and then where the nose kind of connects to the brow. Big eyes, but I didn't go overly big, but I did want to go ahead and create them nice and big. Now I will say this too, as a general tip here, and this could be a whole video in itself. If you've ever had problems drawing um, female figures with like the eye makeup, like the cat eye makeup, like she has right now, like it's, you know, every, everyone kind of does it. They draw like the really super thick, over exaggerated um, mascara, whatever it is on their female drawings. A general tip here, start with a realistic looking eye, an eye that you're happy with, you know, like, I mean, realistic can also be an exaggerated, but just start with a generic, plain, unmakeup eye and then add makeup to it, just like someone would in real life. And just like it works in real life when someone adds makeup to their naked eye, it will become more believable. It's, it's all about having that ground structure to build on. It's just like having an underdrawing that you guys can see underneath my drawing here with the circle and everything, right? It's going to make your drawing more structured. Um, so same thing for the eyes. It's gonna make the eyes more believable and structured. I spent way too much time talking about mascara. Well, let's move on. So really, I mean, you know, I, I'm just repeating myself, but, and I'm sure you guys understand at this point, but we're just lengthening everything. Um, I really just wanted to pull her face. I wanted to, to be all about the shock in the eyes and the mouth. Um, have that mouth, as you guys can see, that the bottom lip break that edge of her face there. Um, because this picture is getting cut off, I have no idea what's going on with this hat. Uh, I don't know, shawl thing that she's wearing. Um, so I kind of just threw that in in craziness and the craziness kind of works though. It's a surprise, right? So like having some craziness in there, um, who knows what's going on, it works. All right, otherwise I'm just gonna be in here obsessing over some details, but I think we're good to call this one done. All right, guys, we are almost done with this series. We have one more expression to go. So if you have any ideas for future videos, please go ahead and let me know. I do have a couple things that I am trying to finish for some people that I've seen in the comments recently, but otherwise, I appreciate all of your ideas. I hope you guys liked this video and that it helped. And I'll see you guys in the next video.